Aloha from Ventura, California. It is my place of inspiration, education, peace, living love, and family. It is where I met my high school sweetheart, Megan Conaway, got her prego, and proceeded to make the best of being a teenage parent. With moral support from both of our families, we moved in together at the Conaway's place at 293 Delaware Drive. Megan's huge family welcomed me, in time, in their own way. And just a month after graduating high school, altogether we welcomed my son, Devin. The Conaways lovingly renamed him Devo. The three of us stayed cozy in the detached room in the backyard. My job at the bank afforded us with the deal of a lifetime. My brother-in-law's work connection put us in a two-bedroom house with an acre of land for $500 a month. To sweeten the deal, Megan's brother moved into the granny flat in the way back and my brother's friend joined us in his RV, both chipping in to share the already low living cost. Although we nestled up to an out-of-service oil refinery, it was our slice of paradise. We had successfully crashed the system to live the American dream our way. We waited until we were both officially adults before we got married. Having a bona fide family made me proud. Megan discovered her love of healing through massage therapy while I plugged away at trying to be an artist in one medium or another. Our family grew, we played house. Working as a graphic artist, I discovered how my artwork could reach grocery stores across the country. Designing housewares for housewives that wanted designer textiles and hand-painted ceramics at supermarket prices left me empty as my designs and efforts directly employed slaves in places like China and Pakistan. As I realized my link in the chain of the system, I longed to shift into the next gear. The metaphorical mechanic left the tools right next door to home to push in that clutch. Brooks Institute of Photography welcomed my artistic desire to create. With my growing family and my program desire to always keep getting ahead financially, I thought I could further explore my love of filmmaking in a potentially lucrative field via a college education. I excelled at Brooks while I continued to work as a graphic artist. With optimism and excitement, our third child was born. Shortly after, our landlord notified us that the refinery sold and that we had to go. The Conaways swiftly offered to rent us their house. They moved out and we moved back to 293 Delaware Drive. We were in our dream home with graduation and success just around the corner with a bedroom for everyone and my very own creative space. My desire to excel in film school, to outdo myself, ensured my spot on honor roll. It poured my heart into every assignment. Graduating summa cum laude would surely land me a sweet gig, I thought. I continued working as a design monkey for over a year before I found a job as an assistant editor. I got the opportunity to edit full scenes alongside two talented comedy writers. I did more than assist, faux show. I moved from gig to gig, building my resume and paying our bills. In order for my in-laws to avoid paying capital gains, we were forced to buy the house. No worries, my lucky break is just around the corner. My experience led me to a position as a Finnish editor for a satellite TV show called What It Takes. After finishing a couple episodes, I was trusted with a full show to myself. I was in complete control of post-production from assembly edit, music selection, motion graphic creation, all the way to delivering tapes ready for broadcast to the network. My first complete show was deemed by the network as the model to follow for forthcoming shows. I was proud of what I did for show. The workload was heavy. In order to meet deadlines, I worked out a deal to work from home with my own equipment rather than spending my time commuting. The salary was paying the bills, but I was no longer much of a father or a husband. I was home, but I lived staring at a computer while my life passed by. Working on a particular episode ignited a fire inside me that has been accumulating fuel my entire life. The show was on Edward Norton. Going through the interviews, Edward talked about his experience as a director and his ability to tune into the zeitgeist. He mentioned zeitgeist a couple more times. I was in the habit of researching the show content so I could create relevant imagery to tell the story. This piece was not even scripted for the episode, but my curiosity led me to Google. I quickly learned what the word meant, but I was intrigued by the link to Zeitgeist, the movie. I ended up watching the entire movie, even though Edward Norton's deadline was pressing. Things that I've always felt became clear. 
I don't know what it was that got me studying everything from Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Krishnamurti, Nikola Tesla, Jesus, Buckminster Fuller, Carl Sagan, and on and on, but I loved it. Eventually, what it takes went into reruns, and that gig was up. I stayed the course, taking gigs to build my resume, I helped out friends, and I occasionally got gigs that inspired me to continue on my quest to make it as an editor. With my other job of being a stay-at-home dad, I spent a lot of time in the car listening to NPR as I taxied kids to and fro their busy lives. One day, a special broadcast came on of Obama's Nobel Peace Lecture. He basically said, to ensure peace, we had to send thousands of troops to war. Sitting back and allowing war in my name no longer set well with me. My calling to share the path to peace that the Zeitgeist Movement advocates by creating images that would possibly get others to consider the direction of a resource-based economy became my mission. It started with the Facebook post. With the calling to become the change I wish to see in the world, I sat at home, hemming and hawing over going down to Marina del Rey for Z-Day. My muse lovingly pushed me out the door to meet up with the like-minded people. I felt as if I reunited with my cosmic family that day, surrounded with art in a music studio, discussing how we can live a thriving life while exploring our deepest passions in a loving environment. A few people from various backgrounds and different stages in life presented logical ideas with scientific data to support the material. I felt the unconditional love of the idea of knowing that we have the power right now to house, feed, educate, love everyone. We have the tools and we have the know-how to restore our planet to a healthy Garden of Eden where we encourage one another to eat the fruit of knowledge while sharing the responsibility of being a steward of Spaceship Earth. The calling to get involved stoked my passion. After attending a few LA chapter Zeitgeist meetings, the crew presented me with a challenge to show the film Zeitgeist Addendum at a venue in my area. I managed to reserve the screening room at Brooks, posted flyers around town, and anticipated the free screening. A handful or two of people showed up to watch and discuss the film. The few people there ended up forming the Ventura County Zeitgeist Movement. While our chapter experimented with engaging our community, one of my friends from school hired me for another TED conference. This time we were headed for Oxford. With a couple of free days in London, I reached out to my Facebook friends for ideas of what to do. Someone I never met volunteered to meet me and show me around. I spotted Heather Odom amongst the tourists of Trafalgar Square. We hopped on the river bus and headed for Andrew Buxton's place where we met up with Jock Frisco and Roxanne Meadows. What a surreal day. To manifest the situation of being in such an intimate setting with my heroes, it made me realize how strong my powers are when I follow my heart. Coming home, full of ideas worth sharing, I felt inspired to continue with the activism. The more I learned, the more I practiced being the change the more I realize how our system is killing us just to stay in power. I avoid engaging the machine. When I learned how BP can pollute the Gulf of Mexico and our government and media can cover up the extent of the ecocide they ensued, I choose to ride my bike to my destinations. When I realized how the banks create loans out of thin air, it only made sense to challenge our mortgage. With help, we began the legal battle for the ownership of our home for less than the cost of one mortgage payment. The last three years we have lived mortgage free while I've continued to experiment with doing what we can to live our own resource based economy by creating an environment of acceptance, learning, nutrition, expression, and love. Ultimately and gratefully, my parents have been subsidizing my family's living expenses off and on since I decided to go back to college. With our kids unschooling, we have been farming for organic food and we have worked together to create opportunities to live our passions. We have come to understand that there is more to life than the American dream. We have done what we can to bring love to our community. As I pour my soul into each creative project, I realize that my intentions of serving the world is impossible to accomplish when I can't serve myself. Living day to day without knowing where my family's next meal is coming from, or if our internet will work, or if the electricity will be on, adds stress that we can all feel. Through our back and forth with the court and the bank, we failed to follow procedure. Our demand for a trial was dismissed, so the bank has won the rights to the house, and we've been notified that the sheriff will be at our door any day to evict us. We have already started the letting go process and have been selling all of our belongings. We have a dream to experience life in an RV following our passion as a family adventure. 
The five of us desire to travel to Mexico and Central America on a quest to learn how to live love. We want to see more of America and experience being at home wherever we are. Along the way, we will document our adventures as we learn that wherever we go, with love, we will thrive. Each family member will pick topics of interest to study, and collectively, we will produce blogs and webisodes of our adventures. My goal is to seek out those who are contributing towards living in a resource-based economy today. And in turn, we would be showing others that a sustainable way of living is possible. I hope to spend more time painting, animating, filming, and sharing love with the world through every medium I use and every moment I live. Instead of asking for money and paying you back with rewards, we are asking for resources that we can use or that can be donated. We are asking if anyone can help us with places to park our home along the way. We would like to help farm in exchange for organic food. We are looking for ways to serve, to learn, and to share happiness and understanding for all to learn from. We thank you for living love with us on this beautiful planet that is all our home.